love that. Congratulations. All right, guys, thank you. And give it up for Angela. Thank you so much for helping with these prizes. I'll take, yeah, you know what? I'll take all of it. You go relax. You kick your feet up. Enjoy. Guys, we got a we got a great lineup for you today. Uh, feel free to hang in here whenever you're getting hot. Uh, whenever you're feeling like you want a strange lady uh, who kind of looks like a huge Ellen Page to just sort of talk to you for a little while, you let me know. You get in here. I thought that would land, guys. Ellen Page is a Canadian star. Okay? Please follow her on Instagram. Her love with her new wife is beautiful. Okay, I'll move on. I won't talk about her and Emma Portner, who's a modern dancer. Is that relatable? I don't know, you guys. Who's following Ellen Page on Instagram? I know you're on Instagram, buddy. First and last over here. <laughs> okay, we got one of the uh, Jim Beam guys. Jim Beam is our neighbor to the right. Give it up for our, our Jim Beam gal. That's you. I wore, uh, they, they were lucky, nice enough to let me borrow some of their shorts. Um, I am gonna be kind of back and forth over there. Uh, giving away some shots. Okay, guys, we're gonna kick off. We're gonna kick off with your first comedian. Yeah, uh, guys, this one's a real. It's a real doozy, and I know you're gonna enjoy it. I feel like you should get a little bit more excited. Maybe, maybe we should do what these guys are doing. Slowly sip the tiniest shot I've ever seen in my life. Just slowly soak it up, guys. Your first comedian. Uh, Wowie, she writes for CBC Comedy, and she produces a very funny show at Comedy Bar every month called Forever Young, uh, that's spelled J-U-N-G, get it? And, uh, basically comedians go up and they do a set, and then another comedian pretending to be a therapist analyzes, uh, where that comedy came from, which is kind of fun, <laughs> right? The next one's June 8th. That's right, I don't even need this clipboard, guys, okay? This is a professional situation up here today. All right, are you guys ready for your first comedian? You're gonna make her feel real welcome. Uh, please put your hands together for Sophie Cohn. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, hi. Do you know what I mean? Uh, guys, just right off the top, I just want to get this out of the way because I know you're all thinking it. So I just want to clear the air. I mean, look at me, I know what you're thinking. I look like the love child of Maureen Dennis and Bruno Cohn. Those are my exact parents. Those are the people who gave me life. So just feel like I just wanted to get that out of the way off the top. Um, are there any ladies in the crowd? Where are all the ladies in the crowd? Yeah, it's nice and noise. All the ladies in the crowd, just like bring it in for a second. Can we have like a talk? Can we take a knee? Ladies, don't you think that it sucks so much when you realize that a guy is not interested in you at all and you still have to be his daughter? Oh no, it took a dark turn. <laughs> um, no, but guys, I'm a, I'm a sensitive spirit, I'm a sensitive soul. I have a lot of anxieties in the world. Uh, things are looking up for me though. The other day I bought a new blender for my kitchen. Thank you so much. Thank you. And on the box of the blender it said, easily processes everything. Everything, you guys. How crazy is that? To be jealous of a blender. <laughs> anyway, um, how many of you guys work in a little thing I like to call an office. Nobody, <laughs> nobody works in the, okay, some people work in an office. Uh, I work in an office, jealous, and uh, I just, can I tell you like an awkward thing that happened to me? Yeah. I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna tell it to you. Uh, I had to call HR the other day because I just had like a question about my paycheck. Why is it so big? No, I'm just kidding, that's not, that's not. It was not the question that I had. Um, and the lady on the phone asked me for my postal code. And guys, like I was nailing it pretty hard, like it was going quite well. And I was like, M as in Mary, 5V. And then I got to V, and for some reason, I could not remember the thing for V. And I panicked. And I don't know why, but what came out of my mouth was V as in victimless crime? <laughs> What? And the lady on the phone was like dead quiet. 
for like 90 business weeks. I think she felt a little threatened in the workplace. But like she's the head of HR, you know, like what is she gonna do? Report me to the mirror? Nailed it. Anyway, I just kept going with the postal code real cash, just blew past it. And I was like, M5B. 2T as in totally normal phone call, 6. So it's fine. I for sure still have a job on Monday. Maybe we'll find out. What a fun surprise. Um, how many of you guys, have you guys been on this thing called the World Wide Web? Have we seen this? Do we know about this? Do we know? Do we know? Do we know about this? Have you guys seen this? The internet? No one has seen the internet. <laughs> okay. And you guys have seen on the internet this thing that they have called Frequently Asked Questions. Have you seen this? Yes. And I just kind of feel like, guys, we've all had the internet for like a few weeks now. And I, I think that this whole like Frequently Asked Questions thing, it's kind of done to death. It's on every website. It's super boring. Which is why when I started my website an hour ago, before coming here, I decided to give the people something different, something a little unexpected. And I put a section on my website called Infrequently Asked Questions. Just a straight up list of questions that you never hear anybody ask, ever, at any time. Uh, can, I, can I tell you guys some of the questions that I put? Yeah. Yes! Okay, like the first question, number one. I accidentally bought a bag of no purpose flour. Now what? Infrequently asked question. I have never heard anybody ask that. Uh, number two, I'm a high school janitor named Susan Sarandon. How do I get people to just relax about it? Infrequently asked question. Have you guys heard anyone ask that? I've never heard anyone ask that. No. Uh, number three, I have a casual acquaintance named Barb. I would like to add her to my professional network on LinkedIn, but she died 16 years ago. How do I still do it anyway? Infrequently asked question. And then just like a few more, like a 12 or 17 more. Um, I recently started working at Shoppers Drug Mart. And my fear is that I just look way too erotic in my customer service poncho. How do I tone down my raw sex appeal? Infrequently asked question. And then just like the last one, I don't know if I'd make a good mom. How do you know if you're ready to have chilled? <laughs> that one's really interesting because it starts off sounding like a frequently asked question. I don't know if I'd make a good mom. Lots of people have asked that, right? But then I feel the word chilled really turns it on its head. And then just like that, bam, infrequently asked. Anyway, uh, you guys can check out the full list uh, of infrequently asked questions on my website. I can give you the URL. Uh, do you guys have a pen? <laughs> do you guys have like one giant novelty pen that you all share? Well, it's just. I'll just give it to you. It's just www.sophiecombsinternetwebsiteonline.gov slash very good website slash slash from guns and roses dot org dot com. I can repeat that for you, but I'm like a little busy right now doing this. Um, Anyway, I just wanted to leave you guys with this genuinely useful tip. I just figured this out this morning, and it's like a total game changer for me. Um, do you guys know that if you don't feel like it that day, you don't have to type out the HTTP part every single time. You don't have to do that. That is optional behavior. It's just astonishing. Anyway, uh, that is it for me, guys. Uh, I'm only reachable by facts. Thank you so much. Bye! <laughs> Guys, keep it going for Sophie Kong. She's laying it out. We're filling up in here. Come on in. Come, babies are welcome. Especially a little cute little nugget that looks like that. Get in here, baby. Okay. They have. To, I have to convince their parents. That's what I just learned, guys. I haven't done crowd work with babies that much.
but I'm gonna learn today, and um, I think we're gonna fill up this whole front row just with strollers. What do you guys think? Um, guys, I'm gonna keep this going. I'm gonna bring up your next comedian. Uh, she has traveled and performed all over the world. Uh, you may have seen her uh, performing at Just for Laughs, CBC's Debaters, Because News, uh, CBC Laugh Out Loud. You're gonna love her. Put your hands together for Mama Chavez! <laughs> Uh, keep it going. Thank you. Come on up. Yo, oh, you can use that one. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna heckle you from the crowd. Hello. How are you? It's warm. You know, that's what happened in this country. We have four seasons: winter, winter, royal winter. And now we are in the royal part. And it's awful because you have to take the TTC. And we, we feel like sardines. Like, and not even sardines like from a sophisticated place like Long Lost. Sardines from the dollar store. That's what you feel on the TTC. And why is it that in the first world, people don't take showers? Huh? You have running water. Why does everybody on the TTC smells like ours, the toilet? That's what I want to know. Uh, and, that, and I get mad because they, they hot. I am from a hot country, and that's why there are revolutions in our countries because heat makes people mad. Because nobody, if you take all of your clothes, you don't feel better. You, you could be naked and you could still be, be hot, right? But don't do it because they are babies here. That is the problem. But then I feel, I feel mad, I feel mad, and then I eat my hot cookie and I'm fine again. You see what I mean? But uh, lately, there is a lot of bad mood I'm in the city with the election. Anybody is gonna vote? Yeah? Uh, can you please do me a favor? I am wearing blue and white, but not because of the Conservative Party, but because in Nicaragua, my country, there is another revolution, and they are blue and white. But I have to give this explanation to everybody. You know what I mean? Who's gonna vote for a doggy? Nobody, yeah? thank God. Thank God, you're making me feel better. Because he's like a, a Trump knockoff. And you see what is happening to Latinos in, uh, in the United States, you know? Like, uh, if they hear you speaking in Spanish, they will send you back to your country. I cannot go back to my country because I am exiled from my country. And if, if you put that man in power, they're gonna send me back to my country. I don't have anywhere to go. Do it for Marta Chavez, please. This has been a, a public service announcement. <laughs> Thank you. What else I wanted to tell you? Oh, another thing with the heat is the hair. You should have seen how I left my house. I like my long hair and I like it straight because of the double chin. You know what I mean? I use the hair to hide the double chin because I cannot grow a beard. I wish I would be able to grow a beard, not because I want to be a man, which is nothing wrong. I wish, I wish I would be a man so I can make the same money that a man makes and to hide my double chin with the beard because, you know, you see a lot of fat people, they have a, they have a chin line. Look at Jeremy, you have a line, you have a jaw line. You see very, very, very uh, horizontally challenged men with a line, but I don't. And then my hair goes like this in the summer, and it's curly. And a couple of summers ago, I, I decided to save money, and I went to have my hair cut to a beauty school. <laughs> in the middle of a full course at the doctoring mall, you know? And the voice, the Jiminy Cricket that we all have in our head was telling me, don't do it, don't do it. No lo hagas, no seas estupida, don't do it. But I don't listen to my voice because it reminds me of my mother. So I arrive in the salon and when I see the students, I realized that they all cut each other's head because they look as if they were attacked by a battalion of pirates with dull machetes. Cha, cha, 
chaps, like some of them have eyebrows, some of them didn't. <laughs> and the only student who was available was Khadija, the Muslim girl who is wearing her veil, and she informs me that she started the school two, three weeks ago. And the voice is telling me, don't do it. Khadija is going to do a job on your head. But then my Canadian voice interrupts and, uh, and tells me, hey, buddy, if you don't have your haircut with Khadija, people are going to think you're racist. Hey. You know, because Canadians don't want to be considered racist or rude. You're waiting for the elevator. The elevator door opens. Inside, there is a guy with multiple tattoos on his face. One fresh tattoo on his neck that says, I murdered my mother this morning. But you go inside the elevator because you don't want to hurt his feelings. And that's how I went to sit in the chair of Khadija like a little lamb. And she asked me, welcome, welcome to the front row. And she asked me, what do you want me to do in your hair? And I said, well, you know, I am a comedian. Do something modern because I go out and I go tell jokes from town to town. <laughs> she understood, make me look like a clown. <laughs> and she cut my hair this short, this short she cut my hair, in this big face, in this big, you know, I have gained so much weight, I, my face has become so big, I have to have two Facebooks, that's what we are at. <laughs> and a silent tear starts rolling down my cheek. And she says to me, did I do something wrong? And I still don't want to offend her. And I said, no, I am crying because I'm happy. Because I will be joining your religion. <laughs> Give me your veil, Khadija. Give me your veil. And that's how I spent nine months living as a Muslim woman. And they don't want to let me in the United States. Can you imagine that? <laughs> anyway, is that my time, Kara? Is that my time? Did I do all my time? Anyway, guys, thank you for listening. I hope you keep coming back to the camp. Thank you. Keep it over, Martha Chavez. All right. Guys, this is fun, huh? This is fun. It's not just music time. I want to, uh, we got some new people here. Uh, guys, I'm your host, Kara Connors. Don't be scared. We're going to be giving away prizes. We're going to be having some laughs. You guys can bring your drinks in here. If anybody wants to get me a popsicle, I'm open to it. Um, I want to give away a prize. Um, go ahead, if you can name, I'm going to give away a free pair of sunglasses to the first person who can name uh one of the shows on CBC Comedy right now. Baroness Monscast, very nice, sir, come and get your sunglasses! Okay, I'll bring them to you. Sorry, that was my impression of, uh, of being on The Price is Right. I just, I got a little bit ahead of myself, I apologize. I got very ahead of myself. Also, I love that you said Baroness Von Sketch, good for you. Name one of the Baronesses for a second pair of sunglasses. What? Okay, give it to one of your friends, this is weird, but it's fine. <laughs> okay. Or wear both. I mean, do what you want. You know about Baroness Von Sketch. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna punish you for that. So you guys, look how fun it is to get free prizes. How's that popsy? You got the pineapple lime coconut, ginger. Okay, I thought that was for like if you had a cold or something. <laughs> I didn't get that one. I was like, I'm gonna pretend like I'm having a little pina colada here. Um, guys, we're gonna keep this show going. I'm gonna bring up your next comedian. Very funny guy. Um, he has appeared on the Winnipeg Comedy Festival and Just for Laughs, and he has a web series called Urbane Explorer. You're going to love him. Please bring us again for Jeremy Woodcock. That's me she's talking about. Um, it's true what Kara says. My name is Jeremy Woodcock. That is my real name. Did not change it for show business success. Uh, just got lucky. First try right out of the gate. It's, uh, Woodcock, if you don't know, is originally a Dutch name. And translated, it means, good luck with that in grade nine. Because it did not go well. Not go well. Uh, what else can you know about me? Oh, this is interesting. Um, you wouldn't know it just to look at me, but I'm actually very handsome. Uh, which is working well for me, which is exciting for me. But I don't really want to talk about myself here. I actually want to 
take a moment while I have this spotlight to single someone out who I think is very important to all of us, a very important person, a very important woman. Um, it's Oprah Winfrey. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to hold back. I love Oprah. I think she's done a lot. She's accomplished so much through the years as a host, as a writer, as a, as a businesswoman. But I think recently Oprah hit a new level in her career. Um, she did something that I've really never seen anyone else accomplish. And I'm really, guys, this month, Oprah made the cover of O Magazine. Did you see this? Oprah, I don't know, even when she was a little girl starting her television show, starting her career, starting that magazine, ordering the editor to put her on every issue, did she realize that that would one day actually happen? Or else he would lose his job. But I do also want to talk about myself a bit. Uh, what can I say about myself? What I do for a living? Uh, until recently, I ran a very unsuccessful nonprofit company. Uh, we were called Map Makers Without Borders. Do you guys know about Hindsight's 2020? It was not a good company. Um, it, I'm not a great business instinct like Oprah. I, I went on to lose even more money in what I now see was a very wasteful investment called the Hospital for Six Children. And that is, it's a, it's a waste of space at the end of the day. We had to still the full-size building, but only six people at once, including doctors. Child comes in, doctor has to leave. Um, but I bounced back, actually. I made a fortune in the end by designing the best-selling ever college poster. I don't know if you guys have seen college posters in college dorms. Um, this, is a, this poster was a picture of Bob Marley. But when you go up close to it, you see that it's actually made up of thousands of tiny pictures of Che Guevara. And that's a poster that I designed. And if you went to college, that's a good dorm room joke. What else can I tell you about? I'm not all about my work. I like to do things for fun. I like to do all sorts of different things for fun. Some might be a bit weird, a bit out there. I don't know if you've heard of them. Um, has anybody by any chance ever heard of watching movies all the time? Anybody? Yeah, yeah. Some, someone in the back? Okay, good. I like movies. I get annoyed lately when I go to the movies because I feel like I've been waiting forever for a sequel to my favorite movie to come out. Does anybody know when they're finally going to release American History 11? I don't know if anybody's in the Roman numerals world, but it's been upsetting. Every day I'm checking movies.com. Probably my favorite film of all time is Les Mis. You guys know that film? It's French for the Mis. Um, it's, uh, I will tell you about it. I won't tip, give you any plot spoilers. I won't give away any of the story. But it is a musical, so if you can just download it, listen to the song. No spoilers. Watch the movie. But if you can listen to the song, Javert Commits Suicide. It is quite a track. And you're unspoiled for the movie, and you can watch it after that. I like movies. I also like music. Uh, cinema's blind cousin, as we all call it. Probably, probably my favorite band of all time is Pink Freud. Anybody? Nobody's into Pink Freud? That's not them. That's it. That's something else. But um, nobody's into Pink Freud. You've never heard Dark Side of the Mom? Moon? Sorry, Dark Side of the. I don't know what happened there. This is a music festival. I love to see concerts. I have a friend, Bob, who particularly loves to see concerts. He's a huge Rush fan. And uh, my friend Bob got tickets for Rush's sort of final tour. He's really excited about it, but he particularly loves the song Tom Sawyer. And I want to show you this conversation we had. Bob said, if Rush does not play Tom Sawyer at the show he goes to see, he's walking out. He says, if they do not play Tom Sawyer, I'm going to walk out. His favorite band. Then I thought about it, and I was like, how would that work, Bob? I could see if they, you said, if they play this song that I hate, I will walk out. You can't really know that they didn't play Tom Sawyer until the show is completely done, right? That's when everybody is leaving. You're just pushing past people. You're all leaving. We're all leaving, but I'm walking out. There's one other music thing that's been obsessing me lately. Um, we're in Toronto, we're at a music festival. Who here is familiar with Q107? Right? It's, a, it's slogan is, a weekend at your dad's, is the slogan of Q107. And I spent a weekend at my dad's recently, so I heard some of it. I heard, basically they play 20 songs on a loop, 18 of which are by Kim Mitchell. But one of which is by Bob Marley, and it's the song, I Shot the Sheriff. And I realized that this, while a catchy song, makes the worst point, worst argument of any song I've ever heard. Do you know the chorus to this song? It says, I shot the sheriff, but I didn't shoot the deputy. Now imagine Bob's your friend. He comes to you, he says, Jeremy, or your name, you're probably named Jeremy. He says, Jeremy, I've had a hard day. Something terrible has happened. I have bad news, but I also have some good news. You say, okay, what happened, Bob? He says, well, I shot the sheriff. And you say, oh, God. 
Okay. Was not prepared for that. Didn't know you had a gun. Um, but we can work through. Okay, what? And he says, hold on. But, say, okay. It's going to be some good. Okay, you didn't do it. You didn't actually do it. They're fine. You're talking about a dream you've had. He says, but I didn't shoot the deputy. Fine. Do you want a medal? I don't. The, we're, I'm still stuck, sorry, on the first thing. We, we could both stand here all day and list people we haven't killed. The important thing is that my list will always be one longer. Because at that time you killed the sheriff of our town? As soon as you tell me you killed anyone, we're all upset. Even the deputy. Actually, especially the deputy. Because who do you think probably has to be the new sheriff now? Probably not a big fan of your shoot sheriff's first ask deputies questions later policy. Anyway, I just want to talk about movies and music. There are some things I do for fun. I'll leave you with this, actually. Um, it's very loud fiddle music. Uh, I've been, I want you to know the attention span. I have been fighting it so hard. But I'll leave you with this. Um, people do all kinds of things for fun. I've never understood some things that people try to do for fun when they assign rules and uh, guidance to their fun. To me, the ultimate example of that is drinking games. That's never made sense. When people take something as fun as drinking, and add rules and regulations. To me, the only drinking game that's ever made sense is this one. Uh, take a drink every time. Right? I don't know. That's always worked for me. Anyway, thank you. I'm Jeremy Woodcock. This is Kara Connors. Keep it going for Jeremy Woodcock, guys. Oh, boy. Uh, we are at a very special part of our show. It's prize time. Who likes the prizes? Who's getting down with the prizes? Who's pumped? You already got a hat, but as you know, I double dip. I give people.